Hi everyone and welcome to Crime 2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti and we do begin this afternoon with a developing story out of downtown Spokane. Spokane Police Office and County Sheriff's Deputy shot and killed an armed a robbery suspect after a five hour standoff. They say he was involved in an armed robbery in Spokane Valley in the overnight hours. We turn now to Creme 2's Nicole Hernandez, who has been on scene since the standoff began. Nicole, what is the very latest? So Laura, right now I am on a third, right about a block or so west of the office depot that's uh, just near downtown. And I want to show you behind me. This has been hours that third has been closed right here this morning, early this morning between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Third was closed for about a half a mile. Now we're down to just this block right near Sherman Avenue. You can see investigators working to figure out exactly what happened in this situation. Here's what we know so far from the Spokane Police Department. They say around 1 a.m. Spokane Police found a vehicle in involved in a robbery. That vehicle had three people in it. The two of the people left that vehicle. The Spokane Police Department detained them. The driver of the vehicle, though, drove away, eventually crashing it. At some point in that time, gunfire exchanged between the driver and officers. Now, the subject did not get hit, according to the Spokane Police Department. They did call for backup, though, and the suspect was still in the car and armed. It was four hours of a standoff while officers were trying to negotiate to get the suspect out of the car. They used pepper balls, gas canisters, noise bombs, and the man would just throw those canisters back out of the vehicle. The Spokane Police Department also says the suspect was doing drugs and making profane actions towards the officers. Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel says the man left the car eventually and police were able to talk to him. So while they were talking to this individual, a fire was also occurring in close proximity to the vehicle. The suspect exited the vehicle, still armed with a gun. The officers on scene told me that it appeared like he was looking for the officers, trying to get target acquisition on the officers. So that happened about 545 this morning. And, and like uh, Craig Meidel mentioned, the suspect was still holding a gun when he left the car. So that is when two Spokane Police Department officers and one Spokane County Sheriff's deputy shot at the suspect and he did end up dying from his injuries. Now going forward, because it was both a Spokane Police Department officer and Spokane County Sheriff's deputy who shot at the suspect and now Washington State Patrol is taking over this investigation. That's who's behind me now working on the rest of this investigation. They will be giving us updates as they continue this. And, and of course, this road has been closed for hours. They warned us this morning that it will be closed for quite some time as they work to unravel this whole situation. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Prem 2 News. Nicole, thank you very much. We're taking a live look, as you can see, at the roller coasters at Silverwood Theme Park on this beautiful sunny day. You could see, though, a little bit breezy out there. We're sitting in the mid 80s here throughout the inland northwest, uh, much cooler than we had seen, but still a nice warm day. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick is standing by and Thomas, what do you know? Yeah, still a decently pretty hot summer day. To be honest, we're already in the mid 80s by the noon hour. And while I typically like to see weather cameras pointed up at the sky, well, there's nothing to see in the sky other than the blue skies. And this time I actually like that that Silverwood camera is pointed closer towards the ground because you can see the trees and the flags and the banners at the theme park all swaying quite heavily into the wind. The wind speeds at around 20 miles per hour. So it is another fairly breezy day, but it is also extremely dry. Look at that relative humidity at 14% and that's in Spokane and it's even drier than that in portions of central Washington as well. So we'll be up into the 90s again, which is by no stretch of the imagination, a cooler summer day. It's just not nearly as scorching hot as it was last week by comparison, but the cooler weather is still yet to come. We are under a red flag warning for the second straight day until nine o'clock today. There are high to critical fire danger conditions, so just make sure to respect any burn bans that might be across central and eastern Washington today, but it's that cold front that's off to the north that's going to provide even cooler temperatures for the next couple days. So we'll show you that shift in temperatures heading into the weekend in just a couple minutes. All right, my friend, thank you. The results are still coming in this afternoon for Washington State's primary election. The top two candidates from each race will move on to the general election coming up in November. So let's take a look at some of the top races, beginning with the race for U.S. Senate. All right, so some of the races are being called this afternoon. The race had 18 candidates in total. Patty Murray is the incumbent. She is in the lead with 54% and Republican Tiffany Smiley sitting at 32%. The AP is calling this one 
that Murray and Smiley will face off in November. Here is Tiffany Smiley's reaction to advancing to the general election. That's why New York Times are already called this race, and I can't wait to see the rest of the numbers come in because Patty Murray is scared, and she should be. Senator Patty Murray was tracking results last night from Washington, D.C. She says she's ready to fight for another term because she says there's work she still wants to do. And I go to work every day to be a voice and a vote to fight for the people in my state. Obviously, right now, getting our economy strong, lowering prices for families, making sure we fix our supply chain. All right, moving on now to the U.S. House of Representatives, 5th District race. Kathy McMorris-Rogers is running for her ninth term. She is currently sitting at 51% of the vote, followed by Democrat Natasha Hill with 30%. AP has called this race, and both will be moving on to the general election. Taking a look now at the U.S. House of Representatives, 4th District race. Incumbent Dan Newhouse is facing seven challengers. He has 27% of the vote, closely followed by Doug White with 26%. Lauren Culp also following with 22%, but most likely will not make the general election ballot. Up next is the race for Spokane County Sheriff. Longtime Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich announced that he would not be seeking re-election this year because he says he is retiring and moving to Wyoming. John Knowles is the current undersheriff. He leads the vote with 56%, followed by Wade Nelson, Nelson sitting at 28%. Meanwhile, in Spokane County, four candidates running for prosecutor. Incumbent Larry Haskell is being challenged by three other candidates, all three women. Independent Deb Conklin currently leading with 28 percent, followed by Haskell, who has 27 percent. Taking a look at the race for Spokane County Auditor, both incumbent Vicki Dalton and candidate Bob McCaslin, the only two running in the race, will be advancing to the general election. However, the current number is showing Dalton has 55 percent of the vote, with McCaslin having 45 percent. Let's take a look at the Secretary of State race. Democrat Steve Hobbs currently holding this position. He was appointed by Governor Jay Inslee in 2021 after Republican Kim Wyman took a job with the Biden administration. So there are eight people running for this spot. Taking a look at those current results at this noon hour. Hobbs sitting at 41 percent with the next closest being Julie Anderson at 13 percent. Drew Mickelson with our sister station in Seattle has more on the race. A lot of votes still remain to be counted, but at this point, this would turn out to be a very fascinating election come November. The Secretary of State's office has been dominated by Republicans since the 1960s, but as it is right now, the latest numbers have a Democrat going against a nonpartisan candidate. That Democrat is the current Secretary of State, Steve Hobbs. He says he is, quote, heartened by the initial results. He says he doesn't want to jinx anything, but he says it's nice to know he is ahead. We were with him as he watched the initial results coming back in here in Everett. Hobbs is a Democrat. He was a state senator appointed to the position last November by Governor Jay Inslee following the resignation of former Secretary of State Kim Wyman, a Republican. She took a job with the Biden administration in election security. Hobbs says that issue, election security, is a huge issue for voters, and that's why he said he's in the lead. I think the people wanted someone who would protect our elections from cybersecurity threats, from misinformation, disinformation, and do more voter outreach. That's something that I've conveyed to the voters, and that's the message I'm going to bring all the way to November. Voters were just waiting for a candidate who had professional experience without party strings attached. Um, they've never had that opportunity to select a candidate like that before, and clearly they were hungry for it. That's the nonpartisan candidate, Julie Anderson. She says it is time to take the parties out of the Secretary of State's office in Olympia. At this point, it's too early to say she will be on the ballot in November, but she says she's happy and she's confident because the remaining votes that are still outstanding, a lot of them have to come from King and Pierce County. Those are areas where she is doing awful well tonight. In Everett, Drew Mickelson, Krem 2 News. It is 1210 right now. For some local artists, it's all about the little things. Coming up, a look at Spokane's newest art gallery and the one thing setting it apart from the others.